This video is about the windowing operator. This operator is used to restructure adjacent data points within a data series into attributes for examples within an example set. This data restructuring is useful in many situations, too many to mention, but for example it can be used to allow predictions to be made for series data. Windowing is always used with other operators and this video shows it being used to predict series values using a linear regression operator. In addition, the filter examples operator is used to create a training and test set to avoid any chance of future data points getting into the training data. So what we'll look at is we'll start by looking at the series data, then we'll look at the main parameters for the windowing operator itself and these are the window size, step size, create label and horizon parameters. There are other parameters, we'll obviously look at those in briefly. Uh, then we'll look at using filter examples to make a training set and a test set. And then we'll look at how linear regression fares with this data. And this is really a hint really as to the importance of keeping the future out of training data, which we're avoiding in this situation. So let's start with the data. It's share price data from 1972 for the Ford Motor Company. And you can see here there are one, two, six attributes, numeric attributes and a date which is an ID. For this video I'm going to select just one or two of the attributes for now volume and I'm also going to generate an ID which is numeric which makes it a bit easier to see what's going on with the windowing operator which is here. So I'm going to set a break on the windowing operator and we'll just look at the output from that there are two outputs, there's the window data and then there's the original example. So let's look at the original example set first. And sure enough, there we go, there's the, the raw data. That's just the volume as a function of time. Okay. Now we'll go back to the, the windowing operator. So let's look at the parameters to it firstly. So the We'll deal with the the, the, uh, the slightly less important, if that's the right way to put it. Firstly, series representation. The, the default is encode series by examples. What this means is the operator looks at individual examples to construct the windows that it's going to make, which is the usual, actually, to be honest. But it is possible to look at attributes across an example within an example set to create a window out of that. Um, I tend always to use encode series by examples because that's the most common but be aware you can actually encode by attributes as well for now encode series by examples is what we'll use um, I'm set the window size to 5 and the step size to 1 I'm creating a label by setting that flag to true and that brings in these dialogues here I'm choosing the volume attribute with the horizon of 1 um, other parameters create single attributes at add incomplete windows and stop on two small data set. Uh, leave those as they are. I actually don't know what that one does. Doesn't seem to do very much. These ones are more advanced. Fine. Select label by dimension. Actually, I should have mentioned that. That's also more advanced. Don't need to worry about that. The important ones are window size, step size, label, attribute, and horizon. So with those values, let's just look at the results so we can see what's going on. So I'll run it again, and I, I created a view here, so what I'll do is I'll move things around so that we can see it in one, hopefully in one relatively small space. So this is the original data, this is the uh, raw data, and this is the result of the windowing operation. So let's first of all look at window size and step size. So when the window size is 5, what this means is that windows will be created five wide. The attributes, the number of attributes in the final answer will be five. So you can see them there. And basically what it does, it will look at the five examples it's fi it finds. And it sort of does a mini pivot is one way to think of it. So that value there goes to that point there. That one goes there. That one goes there and so on. So these first five examples get translated into five 
attributes for the first example in the resultant example set. And that's what the window size here dictates. I'll change that in a minute and you can see how it varies. Step size of 1 means it basically then moves on to the next 5, which is these 5 here. And it does a mini pivot and creates these 5 examples. Sorry, these 5 attributes for the next example along. And that's the step size of 1. And so the next one will be these 5 here. And they come from these 5 examples so far. No problem. And then... The label attribute is basically filled in from the value of the volume attribute in this case. And basically what it does is it uses the horizon to decide where in the input example data to take the value for the label. So horizon 1 means look one ahead. So going back to these five points here, they have been derived from these five examples. And the label has come from the sixth one, which is one beyond the end of the five examples. So that 1036600 is, corresponds to this label value here. And you can see then the next five, which are these five here, they've been filled in as before. And now the label is 6589200. And so you can see, you, know, you can sort of satisfy yourself that that's what the operator is doing. And the point of this operation is you're changing a linear series here into a set of a table. It's a table structure that you can now use to feed into a classification or a clustering problem. And what we're trying to do is predict that label based on the previous five values for the volume attribute in this case. And this is what essentially the, the whole essence of this windowing operation lets us now attempt. But before we go into it, let's just change some of these. Let's change the window size to 4, the step size to 2. Why don't we set the, the horizon to 5 just for fun. And if I run that again, hopefully bring back everything as it was so hopefully what we should now see the window size of four means those four it's four attributes and the four examples that populate the first values are here the label is nine let's see nine three one four zero zero is there and that should be five one two three four five beyond the end of the four being considered which it is and then the step size is two, so these four here will correspond to these four examples here. And again, 1460700 is, there it is, it's, that's five ahead. So you see, there's a certain amount of flexibility now in, in deciding how you want to build your examples as part of the example set to feed into whatever problem, classification or otherwise you're doing. So what if we, if we just take a step back, what we're actually saying now is we're trying to predict something five time points in the future based on four values from from now back for four time steps. And we're then incrementing or stepping by two through the original series data. And obviously it depends what you're doing as to how you choose the window size, step size and horizon and so on. Now, you can, if I go back to the design view, we can change or add another attribute in. Let's look, let's put close in for fun. And let's put windowing back to, oh, we'll have a step size of one. Let's put the horizon as one. So now we're, we're going to now predict volume based on a windowed view of both the volume and the close attributes, which are here. So I'll run that again. Let's bring back the view. Here we go. So now you're seeing that there are two attributes that have been used now to populate the examples. So you can see these four examples here. You can see a little mini pivot has gone on and close zero and volume zero, close zero volume, and all the way up to volume three and close three. And you can sort of satisfy yourself that indeed these values have, have been translated into this flattened 
single example. And as before, the label is based on the volume attribute, so it's basically and it's a horizon one, so it's one ahead of where we are now. So we're here now for this first example. Six seven one eight zero zero is that there, and so on. So that's that's quite cool. No, so far so good. So let's just put things back to what they were before. Now, um, so we've made a windowed example set. It's basically going to be, let's make it a bit wider than five, let's say 15 wide. And we're going to then use the filter examples operator to split that into two sets, a training set and a test set. And I'm using simply the ID that I've added as a simple way of splitting the data. So I know if, and if the ID is less than 9,000 out of the 10,615, then it becomes part of the training set. Otherwise, this output here from the filter examples, this is the unmatched one, this will be the ones that don't match that. So this is quite a neat way of getting a training set and a test set. So I'll get a training set and a test set over here. Then I'll pass in simply to a linear regression operator. And then I'm going to apply that, that model to the test set and, and calculate a performance. And let's just run that and see what we get. And the linear regression model itself, you can sort of see it's... You can, you can generally judge by the column here which are the most significant um, attributes that build the model. If you look at the, the text description here, it says how it's sort of fitted the volume label to the parameters, the attributes prior to it, as it were. So if you look at the performance factor, however, let's look at correlation. We're seeing, I don't know, 0.67. So it's sort of done a job, reasonable job, and, and, and it's we've obviously applied the model to the the data and we've got a prediction here and so we can plot a graph of we can plot a graph of label against prediction. And it's not perfect, but it's what we're expecting to see is this perfect straight line, a diagonal straight line between Let's find 350,000, which is there. So there should be a diagonal straight line between that point and about there. And it, you can see it's not well, it's not doing that badly. So essentially, this linear regression model has sort of found something of interest. We can even plot these series now, and you can see if I plot label. Oops, as a function of something else. There we go, so there's label and prediction. Doesn't show it brilliantly well. I'll zoom in and you can... No, it doesn't show it very well at all. Um, but, you know, it's sort of tracking. In other words, it's basically inferred from the window restructuring that there is a certain amount of influence on the label which you can infer from the previous values. And you can see from the linear regression model, it's sort of thinking that the last data point is quite significant. One which is three days ago, one which is 12 days, one which is 14 days ago, all relatively significant. And so it's quite interesting, but this is by no means perfect. And, you know, we can, because of the way that I've split the data up here, I've got a training set, which is built which is building solely the, um, the model. There's absolutely no training data that's made it through to the test set here. So our performance here, because we know the answer is, you know, it's not too bad. But uh, one important thing to be very careful of when using time series data is if you try to do a cross validation for example then you run the risk of bringing some of the future data points into the current 
training is ample, and it means you can sometimes get a rather over-optimistic estimate of cross-validation performance, which I'm not doing here, but this is just the first hint that you know we've got to be a bit careful with time series data when estimating performance. Anyway, um, obviously you can do a bit more than that. You can, we could, for example, put close in there now, and we could run this again, and we could see if we get a better fit now, because we're now introducing some other piece of information in the window. And this time, our performance vector has, it's about the same, to be honest. If we look at the linear regression model, it's basically saying that, yeah, volume is driven mostly, or solely, in fact, by other volume values previous to it. Close has seems to have no impact on it at all. Well, it's quite interesting. Anyway, you can go on doing this sort of thing. What I'll do is I will just rerun the windowing operation and leave that as the sort of final picture. so that you can get a sense as to what's going on. There we go. In this case, the window size is 15, and there we go. There, that means these first 15 have corresponding to these 15 attributes in the first example, and so on. There we go.